My name is Shirley Ash, and I'm the senior librarian here at the Memorial Branch Library. And I'm here to welcome you to today's LA May Bank of Finance program, the history of the first African-American bank on the West Coast. Before we begin, we would like to thank the National Endowment for the Humanities, our Library Foundation, and our behind the scenes staff for helping us bring the LA May programs to you virtually. LA May focuses on the diverse landscape of Los Angeles, highlighting the immense artistic and performance talent that has developed in the course of the city's eclectic history. If you'd like to see more of our amazing programs, please visit our online calendar at lapl.org backslash events. Again, that's lapl.org backslash events. And for our LA May programs, visit lapl.org backslash LA May. Again, that's lapl.org backslash LA May. Our website also has blog posts and video links that highlight the library's diverse resources and upcoming programs. But now, on to today's program, Bank of Finance. Founded in 1964, the Bank of Finance was the first state charter Black-owned commercial bank to be opened in Los Angeles. Established by Oney B. Granville, a local real estate broker who grew very frustrated by his clients' difficulties in obtaining loans. The Bank of Finance soon grew to have more than $6 million in assets that would regularly provide lines of credit to people who had no other means of obtaining them. So please join Natalie Mallard as she tells the inspiring story of her great uncle, Ani, highlighting the overall significance of his achievements, as well as her intense desire to not, to not let this amazing story slip away. So Natalie, please tell us about your uncle and share this wonderful story about how everything was started with this company. Well, um, this has been, uh, it was my childhood. I grew up, um, in the real estate office, and I really didn't know what was going on. And um, I was my grandmother is uh, Oni's sister. Uh, they would have me, and they would pick me up and bring me to the real estate office every day after school. And so I knew they were doing something with houses. Um, I would see people coming in and out with briefcases. I would see lenders. I would see title companies. But I didn't exactly understand really what was going on. And so later on, uh, they were talking about a bank. And they were also talking about my uncle had became president of Consolidated Real Estate Board, which was a, is an all black a real estate board. Because back then in the early 60s, actually, late 40s and 50s, um, uh, Blacks were not allowed to join the uh, white real estate boards. So a gentleman by the name of Mr. I think Willis Carson started Consolidated Real Estate Board. And that way, all of the real estate brokers, the title, all the Black people that business for them to uh, escrow companies and other real estate brokers. 
and it's still there today. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, my uncle did so many things. He founded a couple of banks, savings and loans, uh, an escrow company, and he did so many things. And so a friend of mine, you know, pushed me in 2013 to start and, you know, researching and putting all of this off. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, and so that's what I started to do. And it just started getting bigger and bigger. And I would come down to the library and I would research. And one of the librarians, um, she helped me so much. Her name is Christina Rice. Okay. And she helped me to, you know, research my uncle, the bank, and all sorts of things that my uncle did. And uh, finally, as time kept moving, she called me one day because we were looking for some type of photographs. And she called and told me that the library had some uh, photographs that a gentleman by the name of Roland Curtis mm -hmm. had taken these photos in the early 60s and he had passed away and his estate had given all his photos to the library. Mm -hmm. And Christina said, we think there may be some photos of the bank of finance and your uncle. And she sent them to me. And I think I just totally broke down and cried mm -hmm. because it was so many photos. And I'm going to share those photos. We're very you. emotional, very, very emotional. emotional, very. And so I thank Christina, uh, who is in charge of the Roland Curtis collection. You can see that collection at the downtown library. OK, OK. So that's great. So I think there's a, a slideshow that you would like to commence with and share more about what's going on with the family heritage in regards to establishing this company. Yes, I would. Yes. Okay. All right. This is a picture of my uncle, Oni Burnett Granville, and he was a visionary behind the Bank of Finance, the first African American charter bank on the West Coast. And he was a real estate broker, as I said before. And uh, his office was um, Granville and Granville Real Estate at 5315 South Dinker. And he was, that area was his for many, many years. And a lot of his clients were having problems getting real estate loans uh, because they didn't want to sell to African-Americans west of Western. And so there's something that I would like to explain because I think a lot of people are not familiar. They think when you hear of a savings and loan, uh, we did have a lot of savings and loan at that time, like Broadway Federal, we had family savings and loan. Uh, I think we had uh, First United Bank savings and loan, but there's a big difference. That's because um, savings and loan institutions all uh, referred to as SNLs were thrift banks and savings banks. They weren't um, a they weren't a full service bank. And SNLs were originally created to provide more economic opportunities, like home and home loans, for available to more Americans, uh, specifically members of the middle class. So my uncle wanted something for the low income, the African-Americans that were living e uh, east of Western, and he wanted to bring them over to west of Western, because in those days, African-Americans were living like on Central Avenue, Avalon, Main Street, uh, and they just did not want to give them loans to come, you know, on the west side of Western. And so what he did was he had been friends uh, with Tom Bradley at that time. Tom Bradley was just an um, policeman and then he became an attorney and then he became a councilman. Well, my uncle was very good friends with him before he became councilman or even mayor. And he went to Tom Bradley at that point and some other gentlemen. He went to um, Dr. Edward Ballard, who was a physician and Dr. Perry Bill, who was a surgeon physician, and also um, Wilton A. Clark, who was CEO of Clark Furniture. 
And these men were investors and he went to them and told them, you know, how he felt and that our people really needed help. And he wanted a full service bank with drive through tellers. Uh, he wanted a Christmas club. He wanted lines of credit. He wanted personal loans. He wanted people who were trying to open up black businesses. And he also had an in-house, uh, one of the in-house escrow company, in company inside of the bank of finance. And so they pulled together. My grandmother, um, who was only sister, she was on the board as well. So we can change to the next slide, please. Okay, and I already thank Christina. And then additionally, I'd like to thank Keith Rice. He's a California historian archivist from the Tom and Ethel Bradley Center, USC Northridge. Some of these um, photos you, you will see came from USC Northridge, the LA Sentinel, and Char Charles E. Young Research Library at UCLA. And also there's a photo from the Smithsonian National Museum of African American History and Culture. All right, thank you. Next slide. Okay, this is Antoine and Niley Granville, my uncle's parents. My uncle was born in Freestone County, Texas, which is near a round prayer. And my great grandfather, Antoine Granville, and my great grandmother, Niley Granville, they were sharecroppers, they were farmers. And they wanted to move to Corsicana, Texas uh, for the five children to get um, a better education. My uncle only was one of five children, four boys and my grandmother, Bernice. And so they moved from Freestone County um, to Corsicana, Texas, which is not very far from Dallas, Texas. Next slide. And here I have um, my uh, uncle and my grandmother. Um, left is my uncle Edward Granville. He and my uncle Oni uh, opened Granville and Granville Real Estate. And in the middle, you see my grandmother, Bernice Mount Rue. She uh, was a manager of the escrow company. There was a real estate office on one side and the, and the escrow company on the other side. Then the other picture is Uncle Ed again, Edward Granville. And the middle one is their youngest brother, Autry. And then there's Uncle B, Uncle O.B. Granville. And they had another brother, Antoine, but he passed away um, before these pictures were taken. And he was the oldest brother. Okay, next. All right, my uncle um, Oni, he, when they moved from uh, the country, as I call it, Round Prayer, and moved to Corsicana, he went to Jackson High School. Um, they moved from um, the country, I call it, in 1929. In 1937, he enrolled in Jackson High School. He graduated from Jackson High School. And in 1937, he went to Houston Tillerson College in Austin, Texas, which is now Houston Tillerson University. And that's where he really, really thrived. And uh, all three of my uncles attended Houston Tillerson in Austin, Texas. And it's still a wonderful school today. And then some years later, uh, after my uncle came to California, he took some uh, banking classes, real estate classes, and appraisal classes at USC. Next slide, please. Here's another photo uh, back in 1988 when my uncle went to an alumni uh, reunion at Houston Tillerson University. And I just thought this was a fabulous picture uh, he was there with other alumni that he knew uh, when he was there back in the 1930s and 40s. Next slide, please. This slide is, if you look to your left, you'll see my Uncle Oni and my Uncle Ed. Um, they received, uh, they, would always, they were top real estate salesmen in the 50s, 60s, and even the 70s. So they would win awards all the time at the banquets for Consolidated Realty Board. And to the right side, there's a gentleman there standing with my uncle and his name is Ben Hernandez. He was the, the biggest and the largest 
economist in the United States at that time. And whenever my uncle would open an institution of any kind, financial, he would always go to Ben and Ben was his strategist and would let him know, you know, what was the area like, you know, how they can work to try to get this area uh, feasible to build some type of a, a institution for finance, financial institution. So he was, I mean, an awesome person, Ben. He was, um, he even happened to be a Republican, but he was an awesome person. He was Hispanic, brilliant man. And he and my uncle became really the best of friends. And as I said before, he helped my uncle all the way through his endeavors. Uh, he was a, the leading economist at that time. Next slide. Okay, and then in 1963, uh, my, my uncle was very good friends with uh, Alan Cranston. At that time, he was controller, state controller of California. And um, Cranston was just so taken with my uncle, all the things that he had done. And he appointed him to inheritance tax appraiser, July 11, 1963. And so later on, uh, Cranston became Senator Cranston, United States Senator. So my uncle had so many people that loved him and was taken by his brilliance. And it's just an awesome story. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're gonna get into the bank of finance. This is an architectural uh, picture of the bank of finance. Once they applied to get the charter, um, they had an architect, of course, you know, uh, draw the plans. And this is one of the plans uh, of how Bank of Finance was to look. I think it's a fabulous picture of it. Really, really a pretty picture. I like that. Next photo, please. Now, this is the real Bank of Finance. Uh, and it was about four uh, floors, five floors. And some attorneys and other business people had offices there. The bank was there. And they even had an auditorium because most of the African-American churches at that time, uh, Evie Hills Church, I think that was Mount Zion and a &M, First AME, which was uh, Bishop Brookins and a lot of other African-American ministers had brought their, had encouraged their uh, parishioners to come and put, you know, open bank accounts, and they did. So this is one of the pictures from the Rowling Curtis collection, and this is when the bank uh, opened in January of 1964. Next slide, please. Okay, this is a groundbreaking picture. Um, this is such an awesome picture to me. Um, from left to right is my grandmother, Bernice Malbrou, Dr. Ballard, uh, my uncle, Oni B. Granville in the middle, Dr. Bill, and also Mr. Clark. And at the end, it's um, at that point, he was Councilman Tom Bradley. And at the next slide where um, Pastor Brookins is saying a prayer, um, he was a pastor, as I said, of first thing in me. And so everybody during that time just came together, all the African-American pastors, businessmen, attorneys, Everyone wanted this bank to really succeed because there, there was no other bank that was full service to really help the African-American community. Next slide, please. Okay, now I'm going to start showing some pictures of the bank. Um, here's a picture of the vault. And Dr. Ballard is stand, standing there with another gentleman. And also here's the switchboard operator. So... In that time, it was 1963, 1964, they had all the state-of-the-art equipment. Um, it looks really old-fashioned now, but this was all state-of-the-art equipment. Next slide, please. And then here's uh, the Secretary of New Accounts, where people would come and open accounts. And uh, it was just awesome, just, just an awesome bank. It really was, and they had everything. I mean, it was just like, you know, it was just everything full service, and it was just awesome. So the next slide, please. 
And also, here's an accounts clerk. You can see the old accounting machines and uh, some of the tellers in the back. And so, you know, this was during the time where Martin Luther King marches were going on, Rosa Park, all the rioting and uh, the murders in the South. But on the West Coast, you know, God just opened up those doors and my uncle was, was you know, able to do really awesome things for his people here on, on the West Coast. Hey, Natalie, it's Shirley. I have a question for you. Yeah. You mentioned how um, this was a turbulent time for African-Americans during this time period and how there was rioting and things like that going on. But I'm assuming that people really respected this new institution that was trying to support the Af African-American community and all the property was unscathed. It wasn't damaged by what was going on in the community. You're absolutely right. Um, and I'm going to get to that. It, was, it wasn't um, after the Watts riot, the 1965 Watts riot, um, they gave Bank of Finance, um, they gave them the start, they opened up another branch, and they were able to get the community back going up. So all that money was financed after the Watts riot through Bank of Finance. And on a couple more slides, I'll show you the branch that was opened up. They even had a branch. Okay. And I'm just getting ahead of myself. So I take a step back. How's that? That's okay. That's okay. And I just wanted to also say that um, in the April 24th, 1964 Sentinel article, uh, they noted that there were 14 black organized banks in the U.S., but they were mostly located in the South. And also, I wanted to say that when the uh, Bank of Finance opened the doors in 1964 at 2651 Western Avenue, that was the address, it opened with a million fifty thousand dollars of assets. And then after the devastating Watts rise, what I just mentioned of 1965, the bank assisted in the remodeling, re rebuilding of Los Angeles urban core. And one of the first acts was opening the branch at 8420 South Vermont Avenue in November of 1968. And eight years after the bank opened, the total deposit amounts were $28,744,814, up more than $10 million from 1971 in the late 70s and early 80s. Next slide, please. Okay, there's a bank teller, there's a cashier. Those were the older machines and that they would use during that time. And these are also a part of the uh, Roland Curtis collection at the library. Next slide, please. And these are some of the ladies of the Bank of Finance that worked at the bank. And this is all, all also courtesy of the Roland J. Curtis collection. Next, please. And this is one of my favorite pictures is the drive through teller. And I just thought how awesome uh, she is standing there and the cars are coming by and she would talk through the microphone and you see her over there. Those are her change machines. So when people would come and she would, you know, they need a change, you know, she would go over there and get her change and give it through to them through the drive uh, through teller. And I just think that's an awesome picture right there. That's one of my favorites, as I said. And that's also Roland Curtis collection. So next, please. Okay, this picture is Dr. Martin Luther King and my uncle. My uncle became president of Consolidated Realty Board. I, at the beginning, I told you about the Consolidated Realty Board. And in 1964, um, they asked Dr. King to come because there was there were problems all over the U.S. with African American. It was a lot of turmoil, as I said before, trying to get housing. So uh, it was the night. I think it was in June. Dr. King came, and my uncle was installed that night as Consolidated Realty Board's president. And Dr. King was a keynote speaker, and he spoke about the housing problems and the loan problems that were plaguing um, you know, our country 
because of all the racial discrimination. Next photo, please. And here's another picture. Um, that's my Aunt Theora. Everybody thinks that's Coretta King, but that's my Aunt Theora, my Uncle Bo's wife, Oni's wife. I call him Uncle Bo. And you see um, Dr. King as he's bending down, speaking to him. And the next photo on the left, that's got, um, Mr. Willis Carson. He's the one that founded um, the Consolidated Realty Board because the African-American brokers had nowhere to go. And then you see Dr. King and my uncle, Oni B. Granville, standing there. So that night was really awesome. Um, I don't really remember the night per se, uh, but I do remember them saying that Dr. King was coming and a lot of people were gonna be meeting him at the airport. But of course I was very young and I didn't really know what was going on, but it was an awesome time. Next slide, please. Okay, here is a, a photo of the Bank of Finance Christmas party in 1965. Left to right is Wilton Clark. He was a CEO of the furniture store. He was one of the big investors. And also Charles Walker, I believe he was a pharmacist. And then my uncle, Oni B. Granville. And on the end is Dr. Prairieville. And that's also a Roland Curtis collection photo. Next, please. Okay, and this is a really awesome one. This is uh, when the Bank of Finance reached their third year anniversary celebration. And uh, they all gathered around um, to cut a cake. And this is courtesy of Tom and Ethel Bradley Center over at US, US, USC, US, USC, USU, I'm sorry, Northridge. Next slide. And these are some students that visited the bank on a field trip. And I thought that was really, really nice how the schools were getting involved, churches were getting involved. The whole community was really getting behind this bank. And uh, it was just awesome. Next slide, please. Okay, um, Shirley, this is when you were asking me, after the Watts riot, um, they opened the Vermont branch, and this is the opening of the Vermont branch, okay. which, was, which was at 8420 South Vermont. Okay, that's and I wonderful. Think, I beg your pardon? I said, that's, um, it's wonderful to have this image, especially after the turmoil that was happening in Los Angeles, right. to the community to reinvent itself, to have this type of investment was very important. Right, right. And, um, you know, the bank, like I said, assisted in the rebuilding of Los Angeles urban core. So that was an awesome time, really awesome time. You know, as I said, it was so much going on in Mississippi and Alabama and, you know, on the West Coast, you know, things were just booming. Next slide, please. OK, now there's another part to this puzzle. Um, after in about 1968, my uncle had a first cousin. You'll see these two men look an awful lot alike. And his first cousin's name was Roy Granville. And Roy lived in Portland, Oregon. And he was so just taken by the Bank of Finance here in Los Angeles. And so he and some businessmen, uh, one of his name is uh, VP Booker. And then there's another Dr. Booker T. Lewis. They asked him and Roy asked him to come up to Portland that they wanted to talk to him about getting a first African-American charter bank in Portland, Oregon. So my uncle went to Portland and he moved there for a couple years. He left uh, the Bank of Finance here and he went there to help them. And they opened, uh, and that bank was called the Freedom Bank of Finance. And the uh, state banking uh, personnel of Oregon wouldn't let them name it um, Bank of Finance. So they had to name it another bank. So they named it the Freedom Bank. And they opened August 4th, 1969. And the Portland founders and investors raised over $600,000 in stock to finance this new institution. 
And as, like I said, it was uh, V.F. Booker, Dr. Booker T. Lewis, Roy Granville, which was the first cousin to Oni Granville. And so after the bank got on its feet, my uncle left the bank to a venerable Booker. And Mr. Booker took the bank on for 30 years. And then in 2000, uh, right before Mr. Booker's 80th birthday, he uh, sold his shares and stock to another bank. So that bank existed a long time. And then Uncle Bo Oni Granville came back uh, because he had so many other business ventures. But he did, uh, he and my Aunt Theora moved to uh, Portland for a couple years to help start that bank. And that bank lasted for over 30 years. And so I just think that's really awesome. Next slide, please. Okay, now here's Bank of Finance and when they were having some meetings. You'll see um, Tom Bradley, one of the organizers. You'll see Will, Willie Stennis was a board member next to um, Bradley, Tom Bradley. And Willie Stennis was the owner of Golden Bird Fried Chicken. Are you familiar with Golden Bird Fried Chicken, Jerley? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> And we still have conversations about Golden Bird Fried Chicken because if you're new to Los Angeles, you haven't heard of Golden Bird since you can't find, you find one or two around the city still, but they aren't prolific as they used to be. Right. Well, Willie Stennis was a board member and he was the owner. And then there was my uncle sitting there and then Edward Tillman. He was a bank president. And then Dr. Edward Ballard was chairman of the board. And in the next photo you'll see, uh, this is when they got their state charter. And I do remember hearing they were so excited because they got a charter, they got the charter and I didn't know what they were talking about, but they got the charter from the state and this allowed them to proceed with building of the Bank of Finance here in Los Angeles. So this was really an awesome time. Next slide, please. Okay, here was a banquet that Bank of Finance was being honored. And uh, Danny Thomas was there, as you can see. He was all, also a uh, help to back the bank. Um, also Charleston Heston, he was also, he also helped as well. His secretary was African-American, and I believe her name was Betty. So a lot of Hollywood stepped up to help this bank. They were just so taken with um, my uncle and all the things that he would, was doing at this time. I mean, I would say from 1960, 1959 to 1970, it was like things were just booming for my uncle. He was just opening all sorts of businesses and banks. And uh, he even opened Southern California Minority Capital, which was also an institution where African-Americans can open any type of business they wanted to. So this was an awesome time in Los Angeles history. And so many people don't know about it. They get confused about it. They think it was a savings and loan. And so I'm just grateful to God that he used me as a tool to just, you know, be the vessel and open all these doors so I could really get this story out. Next slide, please. Okay, and I surely had you, I'm not sure if you were here in Los Angeles, did you ever hear about West Adams Community Hospital? No, I wasn't in Los Angeles during this time period and I haven't heard about the West Adams Community Hospital. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is the hospital. Uh, a lot of the African American doctors uh, wanted an, a hospital for blacks in the West Adams, and this was on Western. And the address was twenty two thirty one Southwestern. And my uncle was the co founder and vice president of West Adams Community Hospital. Doctor Weeks. And Dr. Cleary, Dr. Jackson, who were the doctors, um, they were actually the ones that founded it. And then they asked my uncle to come in, and he was a co-founder and vice president. 
It was over a thousand bed facility and it was a really, really nice hospital. And it was West Adams Community Hospitals. And probably some of our listeners and people, they remember that hospital on Western. It just seems like everything was on Western and Adams or Western and Washington. You know, African Americans were really had all, all sorts of businesses on the 3300 blocks and further down there, Adams and Jefferson. They even had travel agencies and Golden State Mutual Life was cat a corner to bank of finance. And um, a lot of attorneys had their offices on Western. So it was a booming time for African Americans in that time. Next photo, please. Okay, and the board of directors of West Adams Hospital had a banquet um, at the uh, LA Bonaventure and their guest was Alex Haley in the miniseries Roots. And so he was honored uh, on July 30th, 1977. And that was an awesome time because Roots had just come out and they asked him to come and they wanted to pay tribute to him. And so West uh, Adams Hospital board, you know, got together and he came and uh, it was at the LA Bonaventure. I think that's also awesome as well. Uh, the next slide is uh, Inglewood Federal Savings and Loan. This was the last institution that my uncle, uh, you know, was involved in in 1979, and it was in Inglewood, and uh, it was at 101 North La Brea Avenue, and it also was a, uh, now this was actually a savings and loan, it was not a bank, so um, that was the last financial institution that he founded before he passed away. Next slide, please. And so when I was researching my uncle, I had uh, the plaque um, that was in the bank. And if you see the plaque, you see there's my uncle's name as founder. And you see Dr. Perry Bill, Wilton Clark, Lorenzo Spencer, who was a real estate broker, Edward Ballard, and then Thomas Bradley. And so in 19, I would say 19, I'm sorry, 2014, I had this plaque and I had a lot of canceled checks. I had some other documents from my uncle and I called the Smithsonian and I sent them a lot of and I asked them would they be interested and they were very interested and so they came and they packed everything up and they took it back to DC. And it was just an awesome time. I think I cried the whole day that they came and packed everything up and took it to Washington. So this was actually the uh, plaque, the founder's plaque that was in the bank. And um, before the bank was closed, and I'll explain that later, um, they had this plaque, my uncle had the plaque removed because he didn't want anything to happen to it. But this plaque is now with the Smithsonian, the new African-American uh, museum. And also I said some cancel checks and other memorabilia that I gave to the Smithsonian. Next slide, please. And this was September 17th. Uh, the Smithsonian invited me to come to the donor reception. It was like a week before the um, library open, I'm sorry, the museum open. And my friend was there, um, left to right, Leah um, Jackson. Next to her is Barbara Boyd. And then there's myself. And on the end, there's Velma Marshall. And we had an awesome time. We were able to see the library. Uh, my, grand, my uncle's um, information that's there, it wasn't out yet because it was so many other artifacts and so many things that they had already you know, were out. So what happened was um, they're digitizing everything, all the things that my uncle did and the uh, plaque and everything that I donated to the Smithsonian. So either in this few, you know, years or maybe now that will be, you know, because they had so many people that were um, 
donating. But it was just an awesome reception. And um, I was just so happy that, you know, me and my friends who supported me were able to go. Next slide. Oh, that's just special. Thanks again to everyone. And also, I would like to thank um, Professor Quintard Taylor. He's a founder of the website blackpast.org. That's B L A C K P A S T dot org. He owns a website and he asked me to write for his website about my uncle. So in 2018, it took me about five or six months, but I wrote um, a series of articles on my uncle in the bank and all sorts of uh, different things that my uncle did and the Freedom Bank of Finance and also about my uncle's life. And so um, I just, you know, I just feel honored that he asked me to write. And so anytime, if you want to look up anything about bank of finance or anything like that related to the bank or only be Granville, you can look on blackpass.org. Okay. Well, Natalie, that was amazing. It really, really was. And I would love to hear some more information about the call from the Smithsonian. Cause that's okay. just fascinating <laughs> that you get a call, you know? Well, I, I call them first and I have to say, I have to give um, thanks to my friend, Barbara Boyd, mm -hmm. because she has stuck, be, stood behind me and she asked me, you know, Natalie, why don't you go on? Why don't you do this research? and call because they're building this new museum. And I think that they would really be interested in your story. And so what I did was I called, you know, and I asked them and I told them, they asked me to send them all the documents that I had. Mm -hmm. And I took pictures of the plaque and different things that I had. And it took a few months and they called and they said the uh, history, uh, the African-American history department is very interested in your story. Mm -hmm. And what they want to do, they want to come to Los Angeles and pack everything up and take it back to DC. And I think I just, I don't know, I just cried. Like cried like I did when Christina told me she had all those photos. Mm -hmm. okay. And so they picked everything up, took it back to Washington and you know, it's theirs. I gave it to them. So I deeded it or everything over to them that was related to the bank. So okay. it's there. Mm -hmm. So right now, if someone would go and visit this Smithsonian right now, they can see the display about your uncle and the plaque and everything's on display, or they're still um, inventorying everything and it's gonna be on display in the future. This, the latter. Okay. They're still inventorying everything and they are trying to digitize a lot of information. Mm -hmm where uh, you can go into different websites, you know, that line up with the Smithsonian and you can pick up on it here. And also I would like to say, I want to thank um, Ed Lynn. Mm -hmm. He's over at the um, Natural History Museum over at Exposition Park. And he was very interested in my uh, story as well. And so I, donate, I donated some items to them but uh, also he has them online and as well at the Natural History Museum mm -hmm. and at Exposition Park. So uh, like I said, I like to thank him because he was just, you know, excited about learning about this story as well. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, I found one of the pictures very fascinating is the pictures of all the young children coming to visit the bank because so many young children have very limited exposure to other professions that was in the Afri African American community. And so for them to be brought to the bank on a field trip and seeing all these black professionals at that time must have been very inspiring. As you inspiring to yourself growing up around this type of, you know, profession and just, you know, 
I don't know, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but to see all these successful people around you to inspire you. Right. I, yeah, it's, it's awesome. You know, because for so long, you know, when you're, when you're growing up in something like that, you don't see it. You don't understand it. You think that's just the way everything is. And like you said, to see these children. So the schools were behind the bank. Like I said before, everybody, the black community, Hollywood, you know, people were really behind this bank and, um, they wanted to excel. They wanted African Americans to have all the chances that everyone else, you know. And people would, my mom, people would go to my mom and they would say, you know, I remember your uncle because if it wasn't for him, I would have lost my home. Mm -hmm. Or he helped me save my home. He helped me get a loan for my house. You know, uh, we couldn't move anywhere. And if it wasn't for your uncle, we wouldn't be over here. Mm -hmm. And so to hear all those kind of stories, you know, your uncle helped me. And you know, I, a guy told me that he, his son, um, older man said his son had got his first car loan mm -hmm. at Bank of Finance. And there was a lady by the name of Olivia Williams who ran the escrow department in Bank of Finance. Mm -hmm. So there were some awesome people involved in it. And the, my family uh, were members of Trinity Baptist Church over on Jefferson, mm -hmm. and they have been at that church since the 1940s. Okay. So at that time, you know, the African Americans, we just, they just pulled together and they, they, they demanded it and, and they received what, you know, ever and children, mm -hmm. you know, as you say, and just everybody was just, it was just an awesome time here in Los Angeles. It sounds amazing. You know, I didn't move to um, California until the 1980s okay. and i won't say when or where because i won't share my age but um all i can think of is the the information that you share with us about the um west west adams community and the hospital there i had no uh, i wasn't aware of that history of los angeles yeah it's it's right there by the freeway um you get on the 110 right there on Western. Mm -hmm. And as you get off, it's right on the west hand side going south. Mm -hmm. I think now they're making it some apartments. But it was an awesome hospital. People could have all types of surgeries. They could have their babies there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a state of the art hospital. And, you know, where my uncle and his friends and investors, when they saw there was a need, they would just hop right on it. And they would just they just did it. They just did it. They just did. I mean, it was, it just didn't seem like, and it wasn't like uh, it was a racial thing because all the other races, you know, chimed in behind him. You know, they came behind him, like Alan Cranston and, and Ben uh, Hernandez and so many other people were all races. You know, it was just a different, even though all of the this discrimination and all this was going on, but somehow, some way, my uncle just broke through and everybody just loved him and he was able to do so many things that mm -hmm. people don't know about. Right. And, and that's, that's what, yeah. Having these programs so you can share this information because it's very important not to lose this type of information for our culture. Yeah. So is there anybody else in your family that is trying to keep this legacy alive? No. 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 So it's all on you, Natalie. <laughs> well, I've been doing it since 2013. Mm -hmm. What is that, eight-year journey? Mm -hmm. And every time I think it's over or it's slowing down, it just picks right back up again. Mm -hmm. Somebody else hears about it. Somebody else wants to know about it. And I don't mind sharing it because my uncle worked really hard. He worked very hard, tirelessly. And um, he never felt, he never really felt that he got his due, okay. you know, he never did. I mean, he never, he did so much. You know, he was a behind the scene person. He was heavy right. in politics. He, a lot of these people that were in office back then, he was backing all these people, but you didn't know it was him. Mm -hmm. And he was helping everybody. He's sort of like an unsung hero of Los Angeles that people didn't know. That's right. Yes, you know, so, well, let me see, uh, and I wanna, Hog the show because I'm a chatter and I can talk. So um, 
So there's a question here. Is there a book or documentary plan for the story of the bank? I sure would love to do that. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that. I really would. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if someone can, you know, talk with me or meet with me and would be interested in doing that, mm -hmm. that is my dream. That's my ultimate dream. Okay. Well, hopefully someone's viewing this program and they will reach out to you. That would be an awesome thing to happen. Right. You know? and, and, yeah. And also, not to cut you off, I, I really would love to have a plaque mm -hmm. or something. You know how they have these different streets where they have a different person's name for a corner or mm -hmm. something. But I really think that Los Angeles owes my uncle mm -hmm. a great deal. And a plaque would be awesome. A documentary would be awesome. A book mm -hmm. would be awesome. Because people need to know our history is really dying. Mm -hmm. And uh, had not I had taken up this, this mantle and nobody would know, and I wouldn't be sitting here today having this conversation with you. And the Smithsonian would never know. And the Natural History Museum would never know. And so many other people that, you know, uh, Professor Taylor in Seattle, Washington, he would never know. Right. But he asked me to write for him, you know, for his website. Mm -hmm. So I'm just grateful for everyone and Christina Rice for giving me this opportunity because it's long overdue. Right. Well, you share so much information and you educated the viewers of the audience and myself included, because when I first came to um, Los Angeles, I was driving in, I think it was the Crenshaw area with a friend and they were telling me this was um, the first, one of the first black banks in Los Angeles. And having a conversation with you, it was really one of the savings and loans and wasn't an actual, like you said, your, uh, your uncle was a, a real estate, you know, person that started this institution so people can get loans and things like that. So the majority of the black banks were saving in, savings and loans. Right. And as I said before, in the beginning, savings and loans were basically for middle class, mm -hmm. you know, people and just to get small home loans. And uh, they were like thrift banks, you know, things like that, where they were not full service banks. Right. And they were not helping the black community. Mm -hmm. And and that's what my uncle wanted was a full service bank. Right. And that's the difference. Because people always say, well, what about so-and-so savings and loan? You know, and I tried to explain. And so now I was ab I'm able, and I thank, thank God for that, that I'm able to explain the difference because it's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And most people, like myself, are aware of that difference. So thank you for explaining that. I appreciate that. Yeah. So um, Christina says, it's been such a pleasure working with you, Natalie, all, the, all these years. <laughs> It has been a double uh, a pleasure working with Christina there at the library. I mean, I used to come in back in 2013 and she would just help me and get all what I needed. And I would come back and I would call her. She never got tired. She answered my call. She would send emails. And she's an awesome person. And I really thank her for helping me. Mm -hmm. And it's great when you have a person that you know you can go to. That's your go-to person. And they're going to be there and they're going to give as much as you're giving to whatever program, you know, or project that you have. And that, that's so important to have that go-to person. It is. Mm -hmm. and, and, I don't, and I think that people don't realize that the library, I mean, that's where you, everything is at the library. It you is. know, and, and, and just a, a blessing that she had those photos. And while I was coming there for those few years, the photos were in the basement there at the library. And they didn't have any money to restore them. And then they got a grant and they started digitizing those photos at Bank of Finance, about 50 pictures for the bank. So it's incredible. You know, it's so many photos in our photo department that uh, people aren't aware of. And we keep getting new collections added all the time. And it's so much history of Los Angeles and the um, 
library's photo department. Not that I'm pitching the library, which I am, but uh, <laughs> but there's so much information, you know, and historical information that the library has that people have access to, and they just have to make a call and start doing the research like you, you know, and that's so important. It would be awesome if someone did like a um, movie or something about your uncle. Okay, so. So all of you have been wonderful. I've learned so much during this session. Please continue this awesome work. Your work is not in vain. And that's from Bianca Davis. So thank you, Bianca. Thank you. So your work is not in vain because I think right now we have so much um, information that's been shared today, you know, and it would be great if we saw some kind of um, landmark or something can be done for your uncle. Like you said, like a, a bill, a uh, better bill, a street that can be named in his honor, especially because there was so much going on in regards to investments in the community yeah. on Vermont and in the different areas. Yeah, Western was really it. Like I said, Western was booming mm -hmm. at that time, mm -hmm. you know? And I remember going to the bank with some of my uncles, you know, when I was little and they would go in and make deposits and. I would see people and, you know, it's just phenomenal history, phenomenal mm -hmm. history. And, you know, to see, be young and to see that type of professionalism being surrounded by ta that type of uh, professionalism and success just inspires you because this is what you know to expect from yourself. That's and that's what we want for all of our young people, yeah. you know, then and now. It's so important for our community. It really, really is. It is. Yes. We can so, do it. We can do it. We can. It's a lot of hard work, but we can do it. I mean, I stayed up nights and days, and my husband would say, you still working on it? You know, he always thought I was finished, you know? But he's my husband, Paul, he's been a great, um, you know, great person, and he's just been sticking with me. And, you know, it's been a lot, eight years, you mm -hmm. know? So I'm just grateful. I'm grateful to God. I'm just grateful that people like you and Kevin and Diane and Stephen and Christina, you know, contacted me and wanted to talk to me and wanted to hear more about my story. It's a blessing. Well, thank you, Natalie. It, it was just awesome talking to you today. It really, really was. So I appreciate everything you've done for me today. Thank and you. The, I know the library really appreciates everything you've done. This program has been an awesome program. So Thanks. I just would like to talk about our next LA May program, if Thank you wouldn't you. mind. Okay. So um, our next LA May program is going to be tomorrow, Friday at four o'clock. And we're going to welcome the world famous ballerina, Missy Copeland. We'll be discussing her latest book, Black Ballerinas. Journey to Our Legacy. This book delves into the lives and legacies of women of color who changed the landscape of American ballet. There will be time for Q&A after, and participants will have an opportunity to win a free book of Black ballerinas. So until next time, we truly appreciate all your support. The success of LA May and all the library programs will not happen without viewers like you. So we really, really appreciate you tuning in and viewing the program today. And so please join us tomorrow. And here is a copy of Black Ballerina. So if you tune in to, into tomorrow's program with Missy Copeland, you'll be able to win this. And again, I would love to say thank you to Natalie your program was just truly, truly awesome. And I'm so glad we learned so much about the history of Los Angeles and the important play role your uncle played in the history of Los Angeles and the Black Bank of Los Angeles. Really appreciate that. So to next time, we're signing off. We'll see you soon. Bye.